Hi there and welcome to this video with Iskandir Fee. In this video we're going to be looking at the distributive property of multiplication and I have a very fun and exciting way to explain this to you. I use some really cool techniques so if you want to know how to do that and how to find multiplication super easy you're gonna have to stay tuned. Okay, now if you think of the word distribute, I want you to think of distribute as giving out, okay? If I say I'm going to distribute the sweets, I'm going to give out the sweets. Okay? I'm going to give each one a sweet, right? Now, let's say I have uh, three children and I want to give them sweets. Now I'm going to have outside of my bracket, I'm going to have a sweet. And it doesn't mean I only have this one sweet. This sweet, I'm going to give it to each child. To each child. So this is the sweet. And this is the three children over here. Okay, so I have this one sweet. I give it to the one boy with the green hair. There's one boy with the green hair. He has a sweet. One with the blue hair. He has a sweet and one with a short black hair. He has a sweet. Okay, so that is how the distributive property works, right? Every term inside the bracket will be multiplied by the number outside of the bracket. Now, when I gave this to my kids in class, they got so excited and they came up with the coolest ideas ever. Now, I'm not in my class at the moment to show you the cool things that they drew, but I'm going to try to draw it myself and then show you what it looks like. But I want you to get creative and come up with a few just so you can get the idea of what distributive property means. The one rule that you have to remember is you cannot have a child, for example, have two sweets okay you can only get it once okay so you get once you get it once and you get it once in other words <laughs> okay now at the bottom i have an example of what one of my kids drew and he was very excited about his example okay so he drew a cloud and then he had the options inside the cloud was thunderstorms or raindrops okay now the cloud can only get one at a time so if I take the cloud and the thunderstorms, my answer would be a cloud with thunderstorms. And what if I take the cloud multiplied by the raindrops? I will have a cloud with raindrops. Oh my word, guys, the kids completely went for a day when they went. Okay, so here I have a cupcake and the trimmings that I put on is a cherry or some sprinkles. Remember, you can only have one topping at a time. So you can put as much toppings as you'd like. Right, so then I have the cupcake, one with a cherry and one with sprinkles. Then I have a house. Um, the house over here, I can put in windows, a door, or a little chimney. You decide how much options you want to make sure it's a plus. And if that is a plus, your signs is also a plus over here. So, my answer is the house with the windows. The house with the door. The house with the chimney. Alright? Wow, my kids got really excited and they really did... Oh, they put in so much effort. Like, this is one boy in my class. He doesn't even, he hardly ever does his homework. Like, he didn't come to school for this. He came to school to come and have fun. And he always draws pictures. And then when I gave this activity, he was so excited to do it. And he was the first one to end in his homework that day. Oh, he was so cute, man. The kids were drawing cars. They even had, like, little outfits as options in the brackets. And then put that on. Okay, right. So I want you to try this activity first. And then we're going to do it with numbers. Okay. So, activity two. Here we go. So, let's look at our first example with numbers. The first sum that I have is 5 times 12. So, I have a 5 times 12. And what I do is I'm going to break up this 12. In other words, I'm going to expand it. This 12 becomes a 10 plus 2. So, I write it over there, 10 plus 2. Note, it's still my 12, okay? I was just expanding it. Then, I will now multiply my 5 with each number inside the bracket so it will be 5 times 10 and 5 times 2 
So I write that down. 5 times 10 plus 5 times 2. Then 5 times 10 is 50 and 5 times 2 is 10. Then I add those two up. My answer is 60. Easy, right? Let's look at another example. So I have 3 times 125. 125 is a three digit number which means I should have three separate numbers in my bracket. So in my bracket I have 100 plus 20 plus 5. So what I do now is I will now write 3 times 100. 3 times 20 and 3 times 5 and then I do the answers. Add them all up. And my final answer is 375. And that's it. That's how you're going to apply the distributive method when you are doing multiplication. Now, there's also another method that you can use, which is called the hashtag method. And I'm going to show you that method in the next example. Okay, so in this example, I'm showing you how to multiply two digit by two digit numbers right so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to expand each number and then I will put it in my grid so the 25 becomes actually it's just a 20 plus a 5 so that is still my 25 over there and that is multiplied by 12 which is just a 10 plus a 2 now in my grid you will notice I have space over here, I have the multiplication in my top left corner. And then the two numbers that I've expanded, I will write down on top. And those two numbers, I will write down vertically. So I will write down 20 plus 5, 20 over here, 5 over there, and 10 and 2, 10 over there, and 2 over there. And all you're going to do now, you're going to multiply by grid. So you're going to multiply like this. 20 times 10 multiply, answer over there. 10 times 5 multiply, answer over there. 20 times 2 multiply, answer over there. 2 times 5 multiply, answer over there. Now what makes this very easy, what I always tell my learners is, you close your zeros. Okay, so if I close my zeros over here, I just look at the 2 and the 1. So just by looking at that, I can see... 2 times 1, anything times 1 stays the same, so my answer will just be 2. You write down the 2. Then you ask yourself, how many zeros did I close? There's 1 and there's 1. So now I enlarge my 2 with 2 more zeros. And that's it. And I move on in the same way. So I multiply the 10 times the 5. What do I do now? Close the 0. I look, okay, what's 5 times 1? 5. How many zeros did I close? One. So I enlarge my five with one zero. Next, I will have 20 times two. Close my zero. Two times two is four. I write down the four. And then how many zeros did I close? One. So I enlarge my four with one zero. And then two times five becomes 10. Right. Now, after I've multiplied all of these numbers like this, I focus on the grid where I have my answers. So I now have to add this up. Now you can either add it horizontally or vertically. It depends on you. So I'm going to do it horizontally like this. So 200 plus 50 would be 250. Okay. So and 40 plus 10 is a 50. What we're going to do with these numbers now is we're going to add them up and that becomes your final answer. Now you will also notice that whenever I add, I always make sure I write my numbers in columns. So this is the column of my units, column of my tens and column of my hundreds, right? Zero plus zero is just a zero. Five plus five is a ten. It's two numbers. Write down the one, carry over the one on the left. So this goes in my hundreds column. 1 plus 2 becomes 3, and my final answer is 300. That means 25 times 12 equals 300.
Okay, cool. That brings us to the end of our lesson with the distributive property of multiplication. Um, I hope you enjoyed that one and I hope that you find it super easy to do it in your workbook. Thank you so much for watching right until the end and I'll see you in my next video.